laughs, fits, tangents. Matt and Mike, virginal fans, began watching One Piece and everything the show had to offer, and their nonsense ideas drove them to create their podcast. Buggy the Clown is back. Fuck, fuck. This is a One Piece <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> These words lured listeners to their grand show in what's now known as the Fun Piece Podcast. <laughs> Nice. That that was good. There we go. That was oh, yeah. yeah. Performance anxiety with the clap. Sometimes I overthink it. it. Don't overthink it. And you know what I overthink though? Jonathan, my his <laughs> great facial hair. I want to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can get a mustache that big, but I want to try. Possibly. I overthink my analyzation of One Piece here on the Fun Piece podcast. Is hey everybody, welcome. A word? Did he just? Why An- is Matt talking about his anal fixation? Oh God! I have I have an anal fixation on somebody's patoot, and is yeah, it mine? It's the Going Marys. Um, oh. <laughs> anyway, hey everybody! Wait, Welcome no, no, the- no! If you can't introduce the <laughs> podcast, I now have a question. If a okay. ship has a butthole, what part of the ship is the butthole? Is it the steering the, wheel? Because the, the steering hole. wheel, no, the steering wheel looks like a butthole, though. Don't they have like drainage holes for water to get out? Um, it's definitely in the hull. Um, water I don't know. Maybe every single porthole is the butthole. There's a lot of buttholes on ships, and I'm sticking to it. Hey everybody! Hey you motherfuckers out there <laughs> in the fun piece yeah, it's universe. It's a limber hole. A limber hole is a drain <laughs> hole from a frame or other structural member of a boat designed to prevent water from accumulating against one side of the frame. That sounds like a Will you got you want to stick it in that limber hole? Hi, my name's Mike. <laughs> Hi, my name's Matt, and I want to anally fixate on that limber hole. Oh no. <laughs> I don't like the energy that has been created. You can tell Matt. This episode you can tell Matt's this. <laughs> I don't fucking care what I'm saying tell, today. <laughs> you can tell Matt's the straight guy on this podcast because, because he keeps talking about buttholes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Hello. It's I, <laughs> Matt, the butthole man. <laughs> Is that going to be? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, you said it. It's I Canada said it. Now. That's a thing now. That's going to be a thing. With me saying hi, it's me, Matt, the butthole man. I, That's gonna be. Yeah. I will Venmo ten dollars to whoever cuts that audio out fastest and sends it as an MP3 in the Discord. <laughs> Somebody make a TikTok. Um. Hey, hey, everybody! It's me, Mike, the pee hole man. Yeah, the pee hole in the butthole. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, it's me, Matt. That's Mike. This is the Fun Piece Podcast. We are watching One Piece, a- the anime, for the first time. And we also have the historian here. Hi, historian. Yeah. Oh, God, guys. I don't, I don't. What's already happening this episode? A lot. Hey, historian, what's your favorite hole? <laughs> My favorite hole? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the one that's in the middle of donuts. I think that's a good the, one. The, the donut hole? The donut hole, if you will. Mm. there's definitely in like 20 minutes i'm gonna think of a good a better funnier answer to what my favorite hole is and i will interrupt whatever is going on (laughs) good good that's fair Uh, (laughs) hey everybody we're back we're We're back back and we we watched episodes 196 through 200 we're 200 episodes into one piece 200 that's pretty exciting Uh, yeah, we are some percentage of the way there. We are twenty ish. I'd say well, less than yeah, 20. I'd say like less mm, than twenty percent. One sixth, about. Ugh. One Man. sixth. Further than you'd think, but still pretty far. Yeah. So much has happened, and also so much hasn't happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of incredible if you think about it. Hey. You know what hasn't happened in 56 episodes? Character growth. Um, 
<laughs> There's been character growth in the last 56 episodes. Not Nami's really towing the line. I don't know. No, Nami. Nami learned to care more about friendship than treasure. Yeah. No, I'm saying Nami's the only one really oh. doing the legwork there. Yeah. She's she's she cares about the friendship hole the, instead the, of yeah. the gold <laughs> hole. <laughs> the, the rest of the crew is just a bunch of d- dumb boys and a mysterious uh elderly woman yeah uh, <laughs> so. she only cares about the history holes she is all about the history holes yep i'm all Chopper about holes cares about all the holes because he's want to make sure that none of them are leaking it's true chopper's <laughs> anti-hole <laughs> no holes no holes gotta plug the holes i feel like usopp's anti-holes because he doesn't want it's any me. holes Tony, Tony, Chapa, I don't like no holes. <laughs> hey, remember that time, Tony, Tony? I ate a human and now I can be one. <laughs> hey, it's me, Tony, Tony, Chapa. Remember that time I got sent away to camp because I stole a pair of shoes and I had to dig a lot on a dried up lake? Hey, it's me, Tony, Tony, Chapa. Remember holes. when I was a physician and... In Maine, and then I got recruited into the Korean War, and I was put into a mash unit, and it was me. And uh, when did when did they call when, when did Tony Tony Chopper become a chain smoking small Brooklyn child? <laughs> when, when is that? He's been hanging out with Sanji a lot. What's happening? He's been hanging out with Sanji so much. I need my menthols. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> do you think chopper is one of those doctors that existed in like old england where it's like you have a cold here's some cocaine and ketamine <laughs> we gotta we gotta balance your humors we gotta cut you open luffy <laughs> take this bottle of absinthe and just put it over everything it'll be fine just suck on this leech <laughs> I need to drain your holes. Got to drain your holes of the bad humus. <laughs> Usopp, we got him. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got, Usopp? <laughs> Usopp, we got we to gotta drain Sanji. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 196. <laughs> Not a gate situation. <laughs> oh. Background MVP is coffee. Coffee? Coffee. Because they talk about coffee. Did you know that I could have recorded 411 hours and 55 minutes of audio on my computer right now with how much space I have? That's exciting. Yeah. Um, did you know that I found your new favorite crush in One Piece? Is it? Jonathan? <laughs> it's Commander Jonathan. <laughs> Did, is he voiced by the guy who does the VO for How It's Made? No, I don't think so. On the Discovery Channel? Because he sounds exactly like the guy you know who, on How It's Made. You know who I thought he kind of sounded like? He kind of sounded like Jeff Goldblum. You think he sounded... He had like, like a little bit. Like if you listen like a to not weird Jeff Goldblum. If you if you like a younger Jeff Goldblum, because if you listen to like the twang of his voice, he's got that like that. I don't I don't know how you describe it. There's like a like a like a a voice like a, like a, a hardness almost to it, like a round hardiness to at the end of Jeff Goldblum's like consonants and stuff. He chews his and, words huh. at the end. Yeah, yeah, and I don't it, know if I got Jonathan well, gonna... Jonathan had that. Listen to it live right now. That's an ad. Hold on. Um, Hold on. There's there's someone he he voices that you guys would uh, know and recognize. It's like these straw hats here. Oh, it's me. It's me, Jonathan. He he is an older gentleman in the show that you've seen him in. Does he voice Garp? No. Okay. All right. I thought he voiced Garp. No. It's quiet now. Anyway, should I start recapping this episode, or are we waiting for this? This. Uh, where's the? How it's made, guy? 
There was a How It's Made guy. I swear to God. I know. Hey, everybody. I know what you're talking about, but it's Bulma's dad. It's Dr. Briefs. Oh. oh. Interesting. Yeah, maybe that's why I had a nice little familiar. A fam- a familial. Oh, um, oh, Gen- God, I'm so stupid. He's. <laughs> oh, it does kind of sound like yeah. yeah. It's just like sorry. Uh, there's like jazz music being blasted you, over the. Did guy. you just give a free ad for Mike and Ike's on our podcast? Yeah, I fucking love <laughs> Mike and Ike's. You don't fuck with a Mike and Ike. <laughs> you you want to fuck Mike and Ike? I d- oh, I no. guess you're Mike, so Mike wants to fuck Ike. Look at that. Yeah. Do you think Mike and Ike have oh. explored each other's bodies? Do you think Mike and Ike have explored each other's holes? I played Ike once, <laughs> twice in Smash Brothers. I played Ike pretty regularly on the like original Smash Brothers. That's because I didn't know yeah, how to play anyone, so I went version. for the hot guy. He's definitely the he's definitely the best Fire Emblem character <gasps> in that game, right? Those are fighting words for a historian. I mean, no, not necessarily. Well, who? Okay, who else is there's so many? Marth. There's Marth. Roy. Yeah. yeah. There's there's more Lucina. Lucina. There's Corin. There's Corin. Yep. Are they the the DS game ones? And then there's who's the nasty one with the feet? That's Corin. Is that you transform Corrin? into the, like a dragon and you're kind of barefoot? Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't care for them. I thought they were perverts. Um, they I are them in my Smash They are Brothers. perverts in Smash Brothers <laughs> and in that Fire Emblem game, but I really like their range on their move set. <laughs> Is <laughs> Is the 3DS Fire Emblem game just uh, like a human breeding simulator? It's, um, I can't say no. Which it's one? It's like if you could play chess, but oh. you could make the chess pieces fall in love and sleep with each other. And then those chess pieces had more powerful chess piece children that you used to save the world. Okay. I highly recommend I, that game. <laughs> anytime I've heard somebody talk about it, they don't talk about the like the combat or gameplay or any or story they talk about how they just can like i mean breed humans well because it, it, it is like the weirdest <laughs> takeaway from that game like the combat is it's standard fire emblem it is turn-based uh-huh. grid combat you are never getting anything different in a standard fire emblem game the story i mean i love the story the story is um painful it made me cry a lot from where i'm sitting in the office i'm staring at a print that is hanging up in our bedroom of that game uh, because I loved the oh. story so much. But also, yes, it is a child uh, war unit breeding simulator as well. <laughs> That's a Fire Emblem print in our bedroom? Below the Sailor Moon picture, yeah. Oh, I always wondered what that was. Yeah. Interesting. It's Hey, it's, everybody, it's this a, is a One it's Piece a scene podcast. And it's, yeah, it's, it's the voiced by Matt Mercer, and he's just tearing my heart out. And that's fine, because that's what Matt Mercer does. He does. Yeah, Matt Mercer's gonna be Ganondorf. Sexy Ganondorf. Sexy Ganondorf. Rejuvenated, rehydrated Ganondorf. One nipple out Ganondorf. Did you see that picture of Ganondorf choking Link? <laughs> no, but I did see Mekeo, the old man who works at G8. I thought I... I, thought I <laughs> uh, hey, no, nope, we're almost there. No, now I'm on the tangent. I definitely sent you that picture of Ganondorf choking Link. Um, Do you see the picture that somebody edited out his beard and it looks like he's got no chin and it's really funny? Yeah. Um, <laughs> perhaps. Perhaps. Can I send you guys something a- in the Discord that's going to get you back on topic with One Piece? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Someone sent. I saw on Twitter. A, it's like a p- image of rehydrated Ganondorf choking Link, <laughs> um, and and someone just wrote, <laughs> "What would you do in this situation?" And then someone, uh, Abria Iyengar who does like critical role in dimension 20 and stuff retweeted it and just said my fucking best <laughs> um <laughs> which i thought was hilarious um that is really good oh is yeah look at tony tony chopper <laughs> so is this the live action tony tony chopper do you want to know something <laughs> incredible about this beautiful rendition of snoop dogg dressed as tony tony chopper with his hat he looks so young yeah do you want to take a guess as to who drew this oda yeah I only know really? that because I saw it on Twitter <laughs> earlier. Everyone was like, Oda's only 
it was like Oda's <laughs> interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> I no knock at Oda because I would really struggle with uh, physical media like paint wise. I do look like that. This looks like a college student figuring out acrylic paint for the first time. Yeah, you can tell he does not <laughs> fuck with paint very often. You give that man a mechanical yeah. pencil, he's a wizard. Um, yeah, <laughs> but it's true. It's hard. Some people col- colors are hard. I think I'm in like the Oda camp of like I can do watercolor and like line work and anything else is just fucking beyond me. Because mm-hmm. I'm lazy and an idiot. You know who's not an idiot is Mekeo, the cool <laughs> old man. Mekeo. Yeah. Hey, what? I just want to put this out there right now. Hey, everyone. Did you know that G8 is a filler arc? I, lear- I thought it was. I learned. Is that. it not in the manga? Historian? Mm, no, I don't. I don't believe so. I believe it is manga uh, divergent. Is it straight filler? Or well, <gasps> oh, is G- <clears throat> okay. There's a little. See, I this section I watched. Um, where is G8? Because I want to see Oda draw Jonathan. We don't. He, Jonathan does not look like an Oda creation. No. It's the fifth filler arc in the anime. Yeah, it's what the internet it's not. is telling me. Oh, okay. You know what that means? We're going to talk okay. about a bunch okay. of other shit, but we're also going to talk about it. But we're going to talk about yeah. We're going to tear ass through this. I did make some observations. Well, actually, no. It was really just the how it's made one. And how fucked up Nami looks in episode 197. <laughs> she looks like somebody she was really ran over a lumpy. Stretch Armstrong. She's really lumpy. Yeah. She was a... Yeah. Like, just very pulled apart. Yeah. Um... So yeah, uh, we start off. We're at the G the G eight Marine Fortress. Splash, going uh-huh. merry out of the sky. Yes, in the water. Everyone sees it. They're like, "What? Crazy!" There was singing. I wrote there was singing. I um, don't remember. I believe there was singing right at the beginning. Anyway, mysterious man fishing. Who could that be? Mm, fishes up some of Usopp's he uh, fishes up Usopp's goggles yeah uh, we see well we don't know who the mysterious man is first first we just mm. see a, a shadowy man fishing and then as he said uh, Mekeo who's like a boat mechanic spots the Mary flying out of the sky um, and then all the marines are like scramble the fucking jets we're being invaded <laughs> um, and they start doing that but then uh the going merry is empty. <gasps> Suspicious. Suspicious. Um, so all the mis- marines start s- saying like, oh no, it's a ghost ship. Oh no, what mm-hmm. are we going to do? I think during this cha- chaos we meet Chef Jessica. Yes. She- Chief Admiral Chef Jessica. I don't know how ranks work. And I don't care. Yeah. She's the she's uh, running <laughs> she's running house in the kitchen. Yep. And then, we, uh, as Mike said, we are introduced to Commander Jonathan. And he is great. He's just soothing, and he's calm. It's nice. It is... For, maybe it's what I like about Smoker so much. <laughs> is he... The, Jonathan, Smoker, they don't yell. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody Every, except and except for Robin, everybody fucking yells so much, and I like maybe I don't get it, but it's like sometimes you gotta chill that you gotta just gotta chill out a little bit. <laughs> you know, I feel like he yells, but he more growls. Is Zoro? Zoro doesn't yell that much. He usually growls. He yells a he yells a good amount, but it's like sparingly compared to like Luffy and even Chopper and yeah. Nami. Who I think and Usopp, their primary mode of speech is yelling. Yeah, it's not Luffy like and Chopper hit the like high, like the peak scream. Yeah, ear piercing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's Commander Jonathan's just like chilling. He's fishing. They call him up. He had just fished up Usopp's glasses, as Mike said, and then he tosses them away. Uh, Jonathan rolls up on the fucking going Mary and the Marines have like crime scene taped all over it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
And they're all just like, no one's here. What are we going to do? And they're like looking around. And then Jonathan sees the south bird hanging out up on top of the mast. And he calls the south bird silly. And the south bird takes great offense to that. And then uh, comes down and attacks him. In the background right now. Sorry. I don't know if that came through the audio, but there's a squeak. And it was my two of my cats just beating the shit out of each other. I, I did hear the squeak. Uh, Raz. Sure. Leave, leave him alone. Um, Jonathan uh, perceives that the ship is uh, the Straw Hat Pirates ship and that they may have infiltrated the Marines themselves. So they need to be on high alert. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't want his men to freak out, so he insists that they keep calling it a ghost ship. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, Luffy is trying to figure out where to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's smelling, trying to like determine where the meat is. He's just looking at four different doors, like pork, fish, chicken, and beef, or whatever. <laughs> and then he just goes. He makes a, a wonderful face where he becomes all nostrils, inhales a leaf, and then just goes for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some quality Luffy Ooh. face happening. I was um, very confused at like why all of a sudden all of them were scattered. Scattered. <laughs> They didn't they, fall off the ship, I don't think. No, they were just all on the ship at the, end of the, at the end of the previous <laughs> episode. And then yeah. the lights came on them. And then I guess they all just jumped off different sides of the boat. Yep. <laughs> it's like, why are they all scattered and separated again? I it's just, I don't know that they, I don't know that One Piece knows how to do a plot. And I, correct me if I'm wrong, if it, if it ever happens. I don't know that they know how to do a plot where everyone is together the entire time. I feel like they have to split everyone up so they can have the like sitcom A plot, B plot throughout. I mean, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I was just like, why are they separated? Um, um, yeah, I mean, I think especially with the crew expanding, I mean, the crew only continues to get bigger from here. Um, mm. <laughs> so, Jimmy. I mean, for the sake of, I feel like most long running i mean matt has been binge walking the walking dead and it's like as soon as you get a large group of people everyone gets separated you get one issue (laughs) focused per person i'm not i don't mean that in a bad way matt you are just currently i left for work this morning and then i came back and you were like a season and a half deeper into the walking dead and that is what it is (laughs) can i can i defend myself please my brother's racist, but I got a motorcycle, and I like to walk in the rain, and I'm friends with Hideo Kojima. <laughs> My boy's in the barn. <laughs> oh. Man, you know what's fucked up? I only know the character Negan from Tekken 7. <laughs> that's exactly how you should know him. That's the only... That's right. also... That was how I knew the uh, dude from Final Fantasy 15 for a long time. That's also All fair. Right. <laughs> All right. They're friends. Okay. So, <laughs> I here we go another tangent. Uh so back when, back in the I'm a I'm a big comic book reader and such. And back in the early 2000s, I was gifted the first volume of like the p- trade paperback of The Walking Dead, and I was like, "Oh, I like this a lot." Um and I like most teenage boys was going deeply through zombie phase. Um <laughs> love the zombies you got like the the you know zombie survival guide and all that shit whatever everyone was big on zombies (laughs) for like a decade Um, i will support that i will yeah yeah anyway so but i i i was like so excited when the walking dead came out and like a lot of people i think was was very like an avid watcher and followed along with it and then i think most people dropped off all around the same time of watching where they basically Ooh, where was that it was it was <laughs> spoilers the cliffhanger at the end of season five uh when negan appears and then the first episode of season six when oh, okay ne- you find out who negan hit with his baseball bat um and if you read the comic books which i had already i was like oh i know who this is uh, but i'm trying to be like i know it's like fucking 10 years old but also i'm trying to be yeah i don't know what the cross section between one piece and whatever walking dead is. fucking negan smashes glenn's head in with a baseball bat in the comic book 
and they like the producers of the TV show tried to be all like, oh, but who is it really? Um, for like seven months in between seasons, trying to like be coy <laughs> about it, and then this the sixth season started and a different character gets his head smashed in but then right after that glenn also gets his head smashed in. <laughs> so they're like oh it's not what you expected um yeah. and tried to and tried to play it off like they were like creating this great storytelling arc and it was like no you just like devolved the show into like you know each like beginning of the season episode mid-season like finale and then like season finale like someone dies and that's like the big story arc like they didn't take any of the other character development that like the comic books delved into it they just kind of like skewered it forward and i understand they're trying to make it like mass appeal to people whatever anyway i fucking i hurt myself over the weekend and i've just been like binging <laughs> it because i was like you know what i'm gonna give it a chance because i never like watched the show mm. after that and I read all the comics all the way to the end of it. So I was like, oh, I'll that's give it a the shit. most impressive. I, I read the first volume. Yeah. And then I, I stopped because the artist changed. Yeah. And obviously, talented, skilled artists who could, you know, draw quickly. There was like a point where characters like all shaved their heads and everybody was identical. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know who the fuck is talking anymore. And it was like just such a stark contrast that I'm like, I, well, that was a good first volume i think i'll just give up now it's it's interesting it, i'm pretty sure they had this the artist who did the the cover art and then all of the first volume continued mm -hmm. to do the cover art for the rest of the trade paperbacks but yeah. didn't do the the inside artwork well, um, they do that a lot with western comics because they'll be like oh this guy like takes longer to draw yeah but it'll be higher quality and draw people in and then they'll be hooked by the story and then we'll go with a cheaper artist or something. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, um, who, who is like the mayor, the governor in one governor. governor. Yeah. <laughs> the governor in the one. That's how far I got. Yeah. Okay. He had his like daughter in a <clears throat> fish tank or something. I don't well, know. He has daughter and he had a bunch of heads in a fish tank, uh, yeah. in fish tanks. Yeah. Kind of a psycho. It's fine. Yeah, not, not great. It's fine. It was what it was. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I've been pitching that. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not going to say it's the greatest television show ever because it's <laughs> definitely not. But you know what no, is that, pretty that's lost. great? You know what is like the greatest television show? Lost? Well, that. But besides that. <laughs> um, One Piece. Mash? One Piece? Maybe? Maybe One Piece? Mash. Maybe One Piece. Mash is my favorite TV show. Well, I'm I'm on the One Piece train right now. Maybe that's why I like Doctor Doctor Tony Tony Top. <laughs> I just broke Matt. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> um. All right. Anyway, the Straw Hats are in the forest. Uh, Sanji tries to light a cigarette, but then the Marines see it and shoot in his direction. He's like, "Can't even smoke in peace." Um. Robin uses her arms to to go onto the Going Merry and learn that the Marines think that the ship is a ghost ship. Choppers are running around inside the marine base already somehow. Metal Gear Chopper. Um, <laughs> Zoro's wandering around and he's just like, all right, where to next? Um, he somehow made it into the base. They lock the Mary up at like one of the gates that the Marines has their or docks that the Marines have the bunch of their shit. Uh, they clo the Marines close off their their giant gate. So basically, this like Marine port. There's like a fortress island in the center that has like a bunch of cannons coming out of like the cliff sides, and then around it is like a giant lake of water, and then around that is another like rock formation uh, that is like mountain size. And the Marines basically have like a giant metal gate that opens and closes to the sea, so that they can like let ships in, but then close it I off. And there's cannons everywhere, pointed inward, outward, upward, like just every rock face has cannons sticking out. Yeah. So that they close that up. Luffy gets inside of the base and he's like following some guy and just like thumbs up. That into was really good. <laughs> um, yeah. The guy keeps like looking behind himself and then like Luffy is just able to like easily hide behind him. Yeah. And it's great. Gives like a little peace sign to the camera. Yeah. And then we cut to Jonathan who's in his office and he's playing chess with himself. And he's like, yeah. why are these straw hats here? 
And that's it. That's the end of the episode. Jonathan is the Pete Martell of One Piece. <laughs> I'm not going to explain that, but if you get it, good for you. <laughs> I didn't get it, but I gave a giggle. Yeah, have you? It's it's from Twin Peaks. Yeah. He's the best character in Twin Peaks. If you watched Twin Peaks and you saw him, he's... And I think he's like the second character you see or the first character you see in Twin Peaks. Mm. He's just an old man and he's the only sweetheart, like true. He's not the only pure one, but he's great. And he just goes, you know, there was a fish in the percolator. <laughs> would you would you get a tattoo of his face on your body? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Are you <laughs> kidding me? I don't know why I haven't gotten. I've got a Twin Peaks. I'm not even a big Twin Peaks fan. I think it's fine. <laughs> You did go to Twin Peaks Fest one summer. Yeah, and David Lynch mind fucked me, and I've never met him. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care for it, and I'm not going to explain it here. All right. Anyway, um, hey, episode 197. Fine. Yeah. That's fine. She was wrapped in plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth watching. I it's put, it's not long. I put holes episode. in the plastic so she could breathe. Um <laughs> Anyway, Mike, can I recommend to you uh, an anime that is like ninety percent just one big Twin Peaks reference, but it's not Twin Peaks. It's like about kids who turn into weapons and kill demons. Man, if One Piece doesn't have a Twin Peaks reference at some point, I will be surprised. Is, what, what is this anime called? Uh, this anime is called Soul Eater. Soul, Soul Eater. Eater. Okay. It's from the early aughts, so you know it's not great, but it's oh, yeah. fun. Yeah. All right. All right, I'll I'll check it out. I definitely we'll absorbed back. I definitely absorbed at least two episodes of Soul Eater by being next to Historian. Have you? Yeah, I remember there was some fight on top of like a mountain or a volcano or something, and there was a guy and he had his friend who was a sword, and they fought something. Honestly, that's vague enough to be a couple different shows I've watched. <laughs> I feel like if you like anime, you'll like Twin Peaks because you're like, this is good, interesting plot, tragic, cool characters. Wait, why is this happening? Why is this still going? Who is this? Why did that guy's hair turn white? Why did he get a new form? <laughs> why does everyone have amnesia? Yeah. Why is it racist now? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> it's a good time. This is a this is a Twin Peaks. Look at all these Look at that cat. Happy filler episode, everyone. Happy filler. Arch, Happy filler everybody. episode. <laughs> episode 197, <laughs> Hex Kitchen. Hex. G- oh. Background MVP is the uh, janitor duty leader Marine. Good for him. Nice. Doing yeah. his job. Doing his job. Yeah. Uh, Sanji and Luffy, they're in the vents. Yeah. Being spies. They- Sanji somehow knows that they're in Navarone. He's somehow heard of this before. Yeah, I don't know. It's that's what it. Yeah, Navarone is like the place that the G eight Marine Fortress is in. Yeah, it's like yeah. what they call it or yeah. something. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Marines tow the Mary to their dock. The Marines. Uh, there's a bunch of Marine ships outside the big gate, and they're like, "Please, we just went through some shit. Please let us in." Yep. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Drake's like, no, we can't. And then Jonathan's like, yeah, yeah, we can. Let's let him in. Yeah. We're all just pals here. Yeah. Um, just, you know, come in. We're going to switch our shoes and we're going to learn how to tie our shoes. And I'm going to show you my puppet land. <laughs> <laughs> Are you equating Jonathan to Mr. Rogers? Yeah. Historian is Jonathan the Mr. Rogers of One Piece. Um, in that he's wearing a cardigan, but definitely has like sick navy tat sleeves. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Does Mister Rogers have, or did Mister Rogers he, have sick navy tat sleeves? Uh, I forget if he was what branch of military he was in, but Mister Rogers did serve in active duty. That's why he wears full length cardigans was to cover up um, his tattoos while filming his shows. Wow. Yeah. Who I Bob never Ross knew. Was also in Vietnam, I think something bob ross served mr rogers also gave away video of his feet for free on public television 
are you a lot of people okay? Jerked off to Mr. Rogers' hold, feet. Hold on a second, Matt. Are you <laughs> referencing when Mr. Rogers, in a show of grace and solidarity, shared a kiddie pool with a black police officer to say, "Hey, segregation is bad." Are you equating that to free foot videos, Matt? Hey, we could do both at the same time. <laughs> we could do both at the same time. You social can show justice. You can, social justice and porn can be the same not. thing. Oh social justice and porn can be the same thing. God. Okay. Put this down as the third hot take on the Fun Peace podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Climate warriors. Social justice and porn can be the same thing. And what's the third one, Mike? Vaccinate your kids. Yeah, it's really vaccinate important. your kids. It's very important. Yes. I'm just fucking with you. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Don't worry about it. Don't let's listen to anyone. Let's Vaccinate your kids, please. All right. Anyway, fucking Marines are doing Marine now. shit, and then Zoro's just walking around. No big deal. Yep. Lost. Nami's also walking around, just doing whatever. So f- fucking long and fucked up looking. And, like, I thought it was, like, oh, it's just a weird angle, and they didn't know how to draw her. And then they show her from, like, a normal angle, and she's even worse. She's so weird. I don't understand. Her, her like, it's, wrists and hands were all lumpy and weird, too. Dude, she had, first like, weird rule, claws. If you want to make something scary, you just, like, elongate limbs longer than they should be, and they yeah. did that with Nami. Her her fingers She's were, like... She's a fucking the, cryptid. Her fingers were, like, the length of her fucking forearms. It's like, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> there's, like... Isn't there, like, a Japanese, like, folklore thing about a tall woman who will tap a, like tap on your glass at night and try to lure kids outside? Mm. Probably. <laughs> yeah, that's what Nami is. <laughs> Slender Man. Um, yeah, Nami is Slender Man. Yeah. Uh, um, Nami runs into some French guys who are looking for the kitchen from their yeah. marine their marine chefs from the Marie jo- Joies. Yeah, the Murray brothers. Yep. I think their names um, are. And, they're, and she gives them bad directions. Yep. She does. And she gets a disguise. Yes, she's she does. going full on hitman with this one. She <laughs> changes outfits a lot. Yep. Um, Zoro appears. Yeah. Conveniently, and she throws his swords over a ledge for some reason. <laughs> well, she says she's got to hide them so that they can like sneak around. And Zoro's like, "No!" And then yeah. they fall. It does seem like a weird decision to make. Yeah, take the weapon away from them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like Zoro's like, you could just hold Zoro in front of you, and he'll just kill everybody. Yeah. It's fine. Like he'll, he'll be fine. Yeah. Um, Nami's wearing like a like a cleaning person, cleaning marine outfit, and then some dude appears and is like, "Hey, get back to work." Yeah, it's a background VP. Yeah. Um, Sanji and Luffy find kitchen chef outfits, um, and they uh, make they end up making their way to the kitchen where they are uh, mistaken as the the Murray sh- French chef bros, um, mm-hmm. who are supposed to be there to like start being the new chefs for the base like something's happening ever but there's so much <laughs> everyone's got stuff going on all at once uh but yeah. also nothing's happening nothing is happening <laughs> but they have they have a big cook off and there's chef jessica and she's there and all the marine chefs use all the best parts of the ingredients but what does sanji do matt sanji uses all the food scraps that the chefs didn't use um, and he said, just like loving you, you, you have to love the food. You have to love everything about the food. Just like loving everything about loving a lady. Mm-hmm. You have to use and love all of it, <laughs> which is a weird thing to say, Sanji. Well, he knows that uh, during coitus, a woman's entire body is her erogenous zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh boy <laughs> will we ever recover from this uh anyway the they had their cook off where the the Sorry. the base chefs and a woman's entire a, body is a, a woman's <laughs> entire body is a bunch of meatballs um you don't need to know where the clitoris is <laughs> when the entirety is it's all meatballs. Meatballs all the way down. Uh, Luffy I'll eats... taste her meatballs. 
Luffy eats how <laughs> what is Luffy? <laughs> Luffy eats all the food that the chefs make and yeah. that Sanji's made. He's just eating all of it. Oh, God. Um what? How, what? What? What are you all godding about? Not, no, uh, nothing. The fact Continue. that we said said clitoris or erogenous zone. <laughs> Which one was it? Or is it meatballs all the way down? <laughs> meatballs all the way down. It's more of a what? What doesn't make me deep sigh at this point? <laughs> Women are a lot like meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> if you put them in a slow cooker with an entire <laughs> jar of grape jelly and an entire container of ketchup, they will come out delicious mm-hmm. <laughs> that does also work <laughs> with women good job guys <laughs> i would say it works with everyone really if you put uh it's true yeah we shouldn't be meat, like there's no gender lockout on being turned into yeah. delicious meatballs mm. yeah if you put if you put me in a bathtub full of ketchup and grape jelly for a long time and heat it up mm. i'm coming out there sticky and tasty sounds like we just found matt's erogenous zone the grape jelly ketchup pit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, so first it was a crock pot that had bathtub, now it's a pit? <laughs> it's evolving. Sorry, sorry. We'll 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 do a callback. The grape jelly ketchup hole. Um. <laughs> uh, how about that golf visor that Commander Jonathan <laughs> rocks on? <laughs> it's so good. It's so backwards. good. It's backwards. Backwards golf hat. Is there a more useless thing to wear backwards? It's so, well. It's 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 to keep the the sun off of your neck, of course. Uh, oh, okay. Or if you wear the visor upside down, so the brim is upwards, then you can collect rainwater onto your head. Oh, I never thought of it that yeah, way. Yeah, it's real important. Uh, <coughs> Jonathan watches Zoro fall off a cliff. He does. He watches him fall In, off a cliff and goes, hmm. We, we, watch, <laughs> we watch this transition from this episode being fucking hideous to look at to the smoothest what the animation fuck was that? ever. I and said, then it, keep, it keeps going. I said out loud to the historian, I was like, the animation style just changed. What the fuck just happened? Yeah, like noticeably. Um, I'm and like, curious. We get a lot of like good Usopp. I would be yeah. curious to know. Um, it's a thing that's actually really currently happening in One Piece with the current um, stretch of episodes that are airing um in japan and then the simulcast uh for subtitles in the united states um they do like keyframe animations they do guest artists on certain episodes when like something really sick is about to happen they bring on a specific artist Mm who um does that specific stretch so it's not just you know the b studio who does the generic they take a storyboard they make the animation out of it kind of thing it's a specific artist gets brought brought on for um even if it's like just 10 seconds of combat they get brought on for this this is also actually done in uh western animation a lot as well um primary examples adventure time whenever you see something that looks super smooth in adventure time you have james baxter to thank for that because he animates at 36 frames per second instead of 24 um and then same thing in uh, gravity falls they would do it every now and then when there was an important shot um so like you know the reveal that stan has a twin brother the shot of him pulling his mask down and it being revealed um that this character exists they brought on a specific animator to do that shot within the studio Mm, that so cool. that Very primarily bad. is probably what happened with that i'm assuming because it does the frame rate gets a lot cleaner it is much more stylized it has like this this yeah. charm and personality to it rather than just yeah, the studio like, i think it's like in two episodes there's like a really just smooth animation of like robin grabbing usopp and hugging him to a tree it's it's really incredible i think what caught me off guard i was like why is this happening on these episodes <laughs> <laughs> like was it just like a oh we were free to do whatever we want so may as well have fun with it kind i of did thing? try to look a little bit in regards to these specific episodes it's they're older and it's harder to find um because mm. let's see so if we look at the dates of the episodes when these were coming out these were coming out the episodes you watched were coming out end of june and all of july of 2004 
Um, so a lot of record of that doesn't exist nice. that I can find on the internet. Whereas, you know, the newer mm-hmm. episodes, it's like a thing where they got like, we have this artist, this name, they're assisting with the animation of this combat in this episode because of the stuff that's actively happening in One Piece. Every single fight is just insane off the walls and phenomenal so they keep bringing on guest artists basically to do a section of the animation hell yeah that's awesome well it's a good choice it made these like i I caught that and like was like falling off with like weird creepy nami but (laughs) we got zora falling off a cliff and i was like all right i'm back in yeah yeah yeah. uh zora falls Um, off the cliff animation changes he gets captured yeah and then the french chefs show up at the kitchen Right? The, or they show up in the wrong place? Oh, sorry. They show up in the wrong place. Sorry. sorry. Yeah, they I'm just like the wander kitchen. into sorry. a closet somewhere. Yeah. Sorry. That was my bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's the end of the episode. Episode 198. Eight. I've got two names. Oh. <gasps> my first one, which I crossed out, was Gray's Anatonymy. <laughs> <laughs> I replaced it because it just flowed better with Domo Arigato, Dr. Kobato. <laughs> Which doesn't really make sense no, at all. It doesn't. But it sounds good. I mean, all of the patients would be saying thank you very much. Yeah. Dr. Roboto, so yeah. That's pretty there good. we go. There we go. It just sounded like Mr. Roboto, so I went with it. I liked it. I liked it. Is that song chill? We cool with that song? Domo. Yeah, I like that song. I don't know. Sticks? I'm just checking. I like Sticks. Sticks, Sticks got some jams. They got some, some bops, if you will. That's true. Oh, mine sticks. Um, you know what? Also, I don't like onions. Uh, they have layers. Yeah. Background MVP for this episode is onions. Hell yeah! Oh yeah, Sanji <laughs> cutting up them onions. Uh, Zora's in prison, uh, and his swords are have their own cell, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> I didn't get that. That's <laughs> Zora's, Zora's they have names. One cell. They deserve their own prison cell. <laughs> They do, yeah. And then there's you gotta t- keep those away from him. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's locked up, and he's got like, like his like wooden fucking um, like gauntlet fucking handcuffs on inside his cell, and then his swords are in the other cell, and then there's twelve dudes guarding outside. I was like, man, they're pulling Staring out all the him. stops for Zoro. Um, well, he's the only one. Like him and Luffy are the only ones they know about. They know he's capable. Yeah. Um, I like that he gets interrogated and is just completely honest about it. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I've got no reason to lie to you, man. Yeah. He, he tells the complete truth. And then a dude just starts like noogieing his head with his fists. He's yeah. just like, <laughs> and Zara's just like, what the fuck is we this? We get no follow up on this either. No, we don't. None at all. Uh, uh, Nami's cleaning the gym. Yeah. You know, Chopper gets caught. Everybody wants to eat him. Like, they don't think he's a pirate. They say, oh, look at that raccoon dog. And then he gets away, and they're like, oh, he looked delicious. (laughs) (laughs) Then he ends up in, like, a box full of antlers. Yes, which is very funny, because he also has antlers. Yeah, haunting. I guess it's like if a human ended up in a box full of skulls. Yeah. Equivalent. I don't know. Well, uh, well, Nami has a good line where she just says cleaning sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It would be more like if it would be more like if a human ended up in a box full of like freshly shaven hair or cut hair off of human head. Yeah. Right? Cuz they shed antlers. It's not a fun process, but like Yeah, like yeah but these are like whole antlers. Like they were probably removed. It would be like if a human ended up in a box full of like oh, skin. Oh. No, like freshly extracted teeth. Oh, that'd be. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you said that, all I could hear is uh, the like the beginning xylophone to spooky, scary skeletons, um, <laughs> like <laughs> just that. That's what I imagine it sounds like if you jump into a box of teeth. Um, I mean, I know what <laughs> just loose teeth in a jar sound like. Can you can you record that and can we play that on the podcast? I think that would be a fun sound drop for everyone to hear. A what? Just human teeth in a jar? Yeah, like if you take a voice memo on your phone and like at work tomorrow, you were just like, "All right, I'm gonna hit record on this." Well, and you I'm pick not up the jar of teeth. Okay. And you're just like, clink, clink, clink. I'm not in the office really that great. has the jar of human teeth tomorrow. Um, okay. Oh, please, please note, I do work in dental 
these are human teeth that our assistants practice on for training. <laughs> these were acquired by legal means. This is not a... <laughs> Allegedly. Historian lore update. Update the wiki, you guys. Yep. Uh. <laughs> the brief information known about me is has access to human teeth. <laughs> Knows what kinning is. Has Knows access. What kinning is. Has access to. Human oh yeah, teeth. let's bump through this. Let's figure out. Let's learn about kinning. That's really. Do the we want to do that right now, or do we want to wait till after we finish the recap? I feel like this is going to be like a long, drawn out explanation about kinning. And do you want to just like speed through this recap? Because like honestly, I mean, we can. We for sure. Okay, this one's just Tony Tony Chopper being a good doctor. He yeah. there's a lady. Uh, uh, named Dr. Kabato. She's a pediatrician. I don't know why the fuck the Marines have a pediatrician yeah, on what staff. The f- what the fuck? Why do you have, why do you have Wait, a child the- doctor <laughs> in the Marines? In case a baby also, just washes up in the ocean. That's a thing that happens. But she also can't handle blood <laughs> and you work with kids? In case they accidentally hire a baby for the Marines. <laughs> that <Yeah>. also happens. <laughs> sometimes, yeah, sometimes you got a Kobe showing up. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how you could be any sort of doctor and not handle blood. Like the marine standards <laughs> are so low. Yeah, they. I think they pretty much will take anyone except they wouldn't take Kobe. Uh, which yeah. is, <laughs> they're like, we'll take everybody, but not that um, guy. Except that That's guy. D- Chopper ends up in the doctor's office because he was in the antlers that they're going to use to make medicine. Nami is a nurse now. Um, chopper realizes that like people are in, hurt and in danger and need surgery and stuff done and he's like well i gotta be a doctor now so he becomes dr mustache shorts yep <laughs> and i wish tony tony chopper had a mustache all of the time it's very good it's very good and his glasses the mustache he was wearing, and big glasses so also the image of any doctor just showing up with shorts on <laughs> is a lot of fun <laughs> um in a just open hairy chest <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he does. He does a big motivational speech about the uh, the cherry blossom trees and um, all these World War Two nurses bust in. They're like surgery's prepped, and they do a scene for Mash, and they do surgery on some Marines. I wrote it was like a nineteen yeah nine like a, yeah a Mash like montage like nineteen seventies yeah. fucking like. Like, bu- 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 like chips montage yeah. music. It was so fucking. Yeah, it good. was. It was a lot like that. Um, <laughs> Luffy discovers ovens. He does. Is also something that happens. I do. I don't know if it's fair for me to have a gripe. I think it. I mean, it's just. Like, do the women need to be dressed like World War Two, like nineteen forties style nurses when this is like nowhere near contextually or flavor wise to that when they could just be wearing scrubs? Like I don't know. I don't know. This is Obviously, the grand line, Mike. There's no yes, time the period. It we don't know when this takes place. It could be that era. Or it could be I guess, man. Hundreds of years ago. It just doesn't seem. I don't. It just doesn't seem that practical, considering we've moved on from it. Um, I was really hoping that uh, Chopper was gonna like a ratatouille sort of situation. Oh, like pull on her hair. Either pull on her hair or just like hop on her shoulders and be like, "Put on your lab coat," Um, and then just like shove his arms down through the lab coat and then like do the surgery. While like a ghost to the surgery. (laughs) Yeah. Patrick Swayze's <laughs> ghost the surgery. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think the end. <laughs> um, sensual music uh, plays is just like yeah. slicing through. <laughs> yeah, it's great. That would be incredible. Anyway, um, yeah. After all that, uh, Doctor Cabado discovers she can handle blood, and she is a good surgeon. In addition to being a pediatrician. Um, such a well-stocked marine base, and they've got one doctor there. Yeah, who's a pediatrician? Because all the other doctors are out. <laughs> they're at like a convention or something. Um, yeah, <laughs> a doctor. I think convention. most like emergency nurses would be better at surgery than a pediatrician. Hey, maybe <laughs> all the doctors were at Drum Island 
dealing with oh. I don't know some something some dumb shit. Luffy discovers ovens. Sanji cuts a lot of onions, and then Jonathan walks. Jonathan walks. <laughs> episode one. Every episode ends with dramatic Jonathan. Yes. Episode one ninety nine. Uh, I didn't have a clever title for this one. It's just called Chess Metaphor. Usopp Robin Stakeout. Is that your title? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. They have nice animation there. Like, Usopp's freaking out, and then Robin, like, holds him against a tree, and it's, like, just really smooth and nice. Yeah. Um, this dude named Shepard, is, he's a chief inspector or something, and he's upset about not being greeted and the marine goes over the tenants of g8 that don't matter wash your hands wash your hands. clean plate club <laughs> turn the page uh wash your hands wa- turn the page. wash the hands clean plate club no talking about work while you're eating and brush your teeth after eating turn the page wash your hands turn the page wash your hands turn the page wash your hands <laughs> sanji what are you, what are you talking about down the page watching. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Were you guys Disney kids or Nickelodeon kids? Uh, both. What the fuck? I was both. That's a centrist bullshit. I what? I, th- I <laughs> was Histo- both. His- no, I don't want to hear it. Historian. Um, I unfortunately, uh, not for lack of her trying, had a very uncreative mother. So yeah, I was also a Disney and Nickelodeon kid. It was just all yeah. TV all wow. times. Yeah, all TV all the time. See, I feel like I was a Nickelodeon first and foremost, and I would dabble through Chippendale. No, I was, I was, Mike, uh, historian and I both have divorced parents, so we were oh, raised yeah, by the be, television. Yeah, be a child of divorce, and then you get to watch more cartoons as a child. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. You we had loving parents. <laughs> somebody, somebody, <laughs> somebody do a study. <laughs> now i feel bad (laughs) no it's funny (laughs) it's fine it's funny we're allowed to make i feel like people make like we're all having fun people who have divorced uh parents uh make jokes about having divorced parents and like other people with divorced parents are like oh yeah and they like have a good laugh about it but i feel like people who don't have divorced parents are like (laughs) like, oh no that's fucked up yeah like no it's it's a joke i can say (laughs) (laughs) it's it's fine I've worked with a lot of divorced parents before. Yeah. You know who else is n- not divorced? <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan and Jessica. Jessica. <laughs> They're married. They are married. And uh, they make... J- Jonathan doesn't want the vegetables and the meal that Jessica made. He wants to try the new stuff. Yep. So he gets some meatballs from Sanji and Luffy serves them to him. Give me that new shit. And then Luffy steals the meatballs while Jonathan's eating them, and they have a interaction. And Jonathan gets real scary. Yeah, there's like just this power stomp. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like Jonathan's got powers of some kind. Maybe, maybe. What do you think? If Jonathan has, let's make a prediction right now. If Jonathan has a devil fruit power, what devil fruit do you think Jonathan has? I bet Jonathan's got, I bet he doesn't have a devil fruit power. Yeah. I bet he's got whatever, like, he seems like a Shanks. Yeah. Like, he's too smart to have a devil fruit. Yeah. I think everybody with a devil fruit is kind of an idiot. <laughs> Do you so? Do you think he's even more Chopper? Like, Chopper's like clinically smart, but also very dumb. Yeah, but like so, like Sanji has like really strong feet. Like yeah, I think it's like you know, just he's just. I I could see like Jonathan like at the end of this arc just tearing off his shirt and just getting into a sumo match with Luffy. Yeah, <laughs> like he's just got like big shoulders. Yeah, dude just lifts. <laughs> <laughs> I or maybe he's like a tactical fighter. He's like, I don't have to be stronger than you to win this. Ooh. I play chess. Well, yeah, maybe he's very like he's 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 for all he's had the tactical tactical fruit. He's like, what's his name from Resident Evil Four? Um, 
Um, oh, Mendez? No, not Mendez. The, 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 the... Oh, Krauser? Krauser, yeah. He's like Krauser. So I bet he's like Leon. I think he can just roundhouse kick an entire European village. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> Man, right. Resident Evil really became about Americans invading foreign it countries. It really did. It really <laughs> did. Uh, fell down a slippery slope. Uh, <laughs> Luffy's uh, like, okay, whatever, Jonathan, after Jonathan tells him about Zoro, or until mm-hmm. Jonathan tells him he has Zoro in custody, and then yeah. Luffy's like, where's Zoro? Uh, my boy. My boy. And then they, he gets back to Sanji in the kitchen, and they're like basically surrounded by all the Marines – and Jonathan and Drake and everybody. But then a bunch of other Marines roll up for lunch and Sanji and Luffy escape in the, the scramble of Marines who are ready to wash their hands, eat all their food, not talk about work <laughs> and then brush your teeth. Love it. Yeah. Uh, elsewhere, Robin sees the uh, shepherd guy and uh, jumps him, breaking his limbs. Yeah. Like in a real visceral, maybe the most gruesome scene we've like witnessed of just like crack, 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 like like snapping his wrists and arms in a bunch of different directions, yeah. and then taking his clothes. It's awesome. Transforming herself into Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> basically, listen. Yeah, basically. Robin, uh, cowboy hat Robin can go fucking die in a fire i'm here for elton john robin they are the same thing mike this is new era robin they're the same thing not to me (laughs) elsewhere usopp is disguised as a marine and he he gets to the going mary that's docked and then uh mikao the mechanic is there admiring the going mary Mm-hmm. Um, and then Usopp is interrogated by a bunch of Marines who show up he, and then he's like, they're like, what unit are you with? And he's like, uh, 18. Uh, and they're like, Oh, the sniper unit. And at that point I was like, Oh, nice. He correctly guessed the sniper unit. And then they immediately yeah. are like, they're like, like, we know you're not a Marine unit. 18 the supply unit. And he's like, Oh fuck. <laughs> um, so then uh, he's able to kind of play it off later as or do we get to see oh no yeah he plays yeah. it off later like he's actually the inspector yeah um and then robin comes in as the inspector yeah just throws him under and the fucking bus yeah she's <laughs> like that's not no i don't know this man <laughs> yeah um so they toss him in the brig with zoro and then he's like oh she sent me here because zoro's safe yeah and zoro. next to zoro i won't die yeah and then jonathan is once again waxing about where the straw hats are at the end of the episode. <laughs> As I cradle these little chess pieces in my hand, I can play this game of wits with the greatest mind of all time, Monkey D. Luffy. Monkey D. Luffy. What move will yes. he make next? This tactical genius. This is tactical. Fucking, where's my note? I, I made know. a note that says Jonathan is playing chess while Luffy is chewing on a Jenga tower. <laughs> Luffy just keeps eating more chess pieces when Jonathan turns around. D- Luffy's convinced it's a game of battleship. Yeah. <laughs> Luffy is the hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, like, he makes one move and it's the correct move and wins the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you can't you can't beat random. Sure, right? Yeah, you can't tactically beat random. Yeah. Uh, episode episode two hundred. Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Boom! Clap! The sound of my fart. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's right? really good. I like that Back a lot. MVP is explosions. Hell yeah! This is the best title I came up with. I think. <laughs> Excuse me. Woo. I just burped real bad. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, Mekio inspects the Mary some more and goes, hmm, and then he leaves. Sanji and Luffy are sneaking around once again. Yeah, stealthing it out. Luffy is pretty funny when he stealths because he doesn't, because he understands he's got a character shield, so he just walks. Yeah. Um, they jump um, into the vents, I, and then Sanji's like, ooh, that was a close one. Oh, look what we have to do. And then Luffy just looks at Sanji and goes, secret missions are fun, huh? <laughs> 
I really, really <laughs> see. Like, this is the thing: is like Sanji and just a Luffy, so much fun. Yeah, because it's just you really feel for Sanji trying to be a functioning human, and then he's like trying to like rein in Luffy. Yeah, but then. Oh, like a woman walks on screen and we totally lose Sanji every time. Yeah. It's, it's real <laughs> rough. Well, he like kind of, uh, he, he like in the previous episode when they were like the face off with like all the chefs in the, the kitchen and stuff where he's like, mm-hmm. he was like, he was still thinking like a human being, but he was also like, but I can't punch Jessica. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sanji, buddy, you, you don't punch anybody. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, you can. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're allowed. Yeah. Does Sanji ever hit a woman? Uh, Historian. Um, I am racking my brain. He's got a kick with I'm, someone. I am racking my. I'm, I'm sure Zoro like right hooks some someone, and he is and Sanji is so offended. I, I don't. People can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm trying to think if there is ever an instance where Sanji hits a woman. And I don't think there is one. Because all that's coming up in my brain is also, obviously, Sanji, you know, only does feet combat. Um, But there is an instance where he, like, playfully uh, slaps someone in a very not serious fight. So everyone, that's all that's coming to my brain is when he mm. open hand hit someone but not if not not assault on a woman <laughs> remember when luffy and vivi fucked each other up real bad vivi tried to fuck luffy up yeah and luffy's like listen girl I'm, i will eat your fucking eyeballs for luffy dinner. does not see <laughs> gender <laughs> age disability anything he just sees what he can hit which is all yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man! Also, so Zoro, Henry Usopp is like are locked. six inches. What? Henry's like six inches away from the mic right now, um, but he's nice. also cleaning his fur. So I really hope there isn't just like sloppy audio of. I don't hear it, okay. but maybe the listeners will pick okay. it up. Yeah, I can't we'll treat for that. I hope so. I'm very sorry. He's the fourth member of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um. Zoro and Usopp are still locked up in the brig, and then the Marines bring the Inspector Shepard that Robin fucked up and throw him in with Usopp and Zoro. And then Usopp's like, oh, this is the Inspector that Robin's pretending to be. So then he starts playing along and calling the Inspector Condoriano. Yeah. Um, And the the Inspector's like, what the fuck is that name? And then Usopp's like, oh, stop playing it up. And then, like, Zoro does the same thing. Yeah, I like that she's like, shut up, Condoriano, and just headbutts him. Yeah, just fucking headbutts him. And the Marines are like, well, that settles it. He's one of them. He's one of the Straw Hats. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the the like little trio of uh, Marines we saw first and then like continue to pop. I think yeah. they're the, the sniper unit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they're fun. Mekio ends up busting into the jail uh, to see Usopp. And almost gets stabbed by all the Marines waiting for to spring a trap on uh, Sanji and the Luffy. other Straw Hats. Yeah. yeah, Sanji and Luffy. He talks to Usopp about the mass plates and how he's got to do some stuff with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they talk about the <laughs> fucking such a tease with the, how the Going Merry was fixed. And he's like, oh, I think I know what it was. And then he gets taken away before he can say. Yeah. Um, and then he gives uh, Usopp advice to check the parts of the ship he wouldn't normally check yeah or something more or less um and then sanji and luffy just rush right into it well they they hesitate sanji's like this is clearly a trap and luffy's like yeah so let's just go for it why would we stop yeah now sanji's like this is a trap and luffy's like the boss of this fortress is such a nice guy letting us just get (laughs) straight to the brig that's so nice of him um Um, they roll up they do bust in yeah and the Marines are pretty nice. They don't immediately jump them. They're like, we'll give them time to try to break this up. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just Luffy fall like melts because it's sea prism stone yep. cells. And uh, Sanji tries to work with Usopp to use dials, but the first one is just a sound dial. Yeah. And then the second one is a fart dial that Luffy, Luffy farted into. <laughs> 
Uh, and then it mixes with the f- f- like the lanterns on the wall and blows the entire brig up. Yeah. Which was great. It was wonderful. I loved it. It was really good. Uh, um, and then the boys take off. Yep. And Usopp is freaking out. And he's like, don't let Zoro lead. He's going to get us lost. <laughs> And then he end, they end up not going out the front door that the Marines all were waiting for them at. They end up somewhere yeah. else in the fortress. And they're like, oh, good thing we let Zoro lead because he got us lost. <laughs> Truly incredible. Yeah, it was just the right yeah. crazy comedy of errors. And then the end of the episode um, just ends with like an explosion. And then you he- see Robin and she's like, sounds like the boys made their move. <laughs> oh, those boys. Oh, those boys. All right, we're going to talk about Kenning. Can I? I don't know what it is. I don't know. What what? Can you, so, hey, everyone, we were in the if you were in the discord and if you're not in the discord and you're listening, you should join our discord. The link is in the description. Uh, but in the the discord, we were talking the the subject of kinning came up uh, because I believe someone posted uh, there's like a shitty it says shitty kin list generator. Uh, where you you would click the link. Historian posted yeah, that. Yeah, Historian posted it, and then a bunch of people did it, and then we, Mike and I were like, what the fuck is kinning? Um, I did do my shitty kinless generator, so can I say this before we ta- we learn what Ooh, kinning is? Wait, hold on. Is there... Hold on, I want to look this up. Shitty kinning. Yeah. Because I, I want to say what mine is before I learn what kinning is, because I think that's funny. Um, because if it's a bad thing, then it'll be even better. Well, did you only... you Do the one that you only got one result, just the single result. Not the f- instead of the eight not the full list all right my my single shitty kin list generator of one character mine was dipper pines from gravity falls <laughs> so take with that what you will i don't know what kinning means i think it's a we we think it might be a furry thing or i know the i know the word kin so i i'm assuming it's like maybe they're your family member or something um, or you like self-assign them as a family member? Um, I don't know. It could be something like that. Mike's about to that do the shitty kin list. That would just mean all of Fast and Furious is kidding. All of Fast and Furious are my family. Um, Fam, I got family. Stu Ma- Maker, Maker, Stu Maker from Scream, aka who's played by Matthew Lillard. Oh my god! Oh man, you're one of the guys in the first movie yeah, who ends up being a killer. Yeah, Spoilers. Oh, I was gonna not spoil it. Uh, that's fine. He is half of Ghostface. <laughs> That movie has been one out. Half of Ghost- you're one half of Ghostface. Yeah, that's fine. I, you're Scooby you know Doo. I would you're bet shaggy. most of our audience has not watched Scream. <laughs> Sorry, everyone, if you haven't seen Scream, I just gave that's away fine. the ending. You can watch the other ones that are also surprises. Yes. <laughs> uh, Matthew Lillard, though, I'm okay with that. So, what does that mean? Does that mean I want to fuck Matthew Lillard? Cause wait, Maybe. does this mean I want to fuck Dipper Pines? No. I don't want to fuck Dipper Pines. No. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I tried to do a little bit more research. My, my understanding of, um, Kenning, now you have to keep in mind, um, with a couple people who are, are friends of the show. I also know they existed on Tumblr in the heyday of like 2010 to like 2017 before they banned not safe for work stuff. Those were, those were the years that Tumblr was really popping off. Um, Before they banned not safe for work stuff is when tumblr yeah, was so popping like when there was porn on tumblr it was yeah. doing well i thought i thought it was the opposite i thought it was once they allowed porn then everyone was like we need to get the fuck off tumblr no they banned nipples and everyone's like well this is boring now so they went to twitter <laughs> um <laughs> does twitter allow nipple twitter allows nipple hey it's sure. the fucking wild west now yeah you twitter, put anything yeah, on twitter yeah, now anything, that's true anything goes on twitter <laughs> um so my first interaction with the phrase of so it's it's called kinning you are a kinny uh you have you know like a kin list uh as it's called i don't like the word I'll tell yeah you that much. um but it's in reference to a character you heavily relate to so it's like oh i kin <laughs> this character um kin you know i mean in its literal definition is like oh to be kin with someone is to be friend to be civil to be you know community with someone um this specific iteration of kin um it's actually wild i did a lot of research and i didn't need to um so this is based off of the original terminology other kin um and other kin actually came around in the 70s due to tolkien 
Um, oh, motherfucker. So I've been told this, him. this is actually of first course. in reference to um, when the, you know, Lord of the Rings were coming out, other kin started becoming this known phenomenon specifically in relation to elves. Elfkin were a thing. Um, like there were known groups at colleges they would send out you know homemade magazines to each other there were manifests like it was insane so this received a resurgence online in the early 2010s i want to say the earliest iterations of it that i could find for kinning specifically was around 2016 um directly in the results of um there was a couple of games coming out at the time, specifically the Danganronpa games. I pronounced that wrong. Someone will correct me. That's fine. Um, but are those like the kill school games? Yes. Like it's like a who done it. Yes. School? Um, and also in relation, and this was actually my first interaction with the concept of kinning. Oh, this this sucks. I don't like unveiling this. Um, I was in <laughs> a specific Discord group of other people who all watched Voltron at the time, and there was a. <laughs> huge massive blowout fight and eventual disbanding of this group of like 15 20 people who were all really close friends due to kinning um so it can be a very light-hearted thing of like this is a character i really relate to like i think my life story and their backstory are very similar i you know just relate to them on a more than normal level matt you're raising your hand I am raising my hand. Uh, what was the name of that Voltron fan fiction that I read where they talk about filling each other up like a big gulp? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Magic Mike Voltron. Give me like, a hot thing. second and I know I can Google it. Uh, hey. For everyone else, I just clicked the shitty kinless generator button again and I got fucking Shinji. For yeah, <laughs> see, that's that's a shitty kin to have would be like Shinji. Oh, God. Um, Any character from that fucking show is a shitty kin. What is... Shinji. Shinji. It's Shinji. It's me, Sanji. The adult man tried to kiss me. Um, I'm trying to think Can of... Can you introduce me to Misato? <laughs> I'm confused by my feelings. My dad doesn't love me. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not. <laughs> oh, God. I will never apologize to Neon Genesis fan- fans. I'm, for I'm trying to remember that. Worse. <laughs> <laughs> I gen- I'm trying to remember that Voltron. It was like the and then something. Uh, the Coxcomb the, is what it was called. The Coxcomb. Um, yes. The coxcomb. Hey everyone, you should read the Coxcomb. No, you it's shouldn't. Visceral. Um, um, but if you're a fan of Voltron, read the Coxcomb. So kinning on a base coxcomb. level is yes, people just relating <laughs> to uh, the character specifically. Digging deeper in kinning, kinning. Um, whether from a legitimate standpoint or from a bullying standpoint, started getting associated with um, self-medication isn't the word I'm looking for, um, but like trauma processing, basically. Um, Whether, again, realistically or as a joke, people started being like, oh, people are using this as a a coping mechanism is the word I'm looking for. Um, Mm -hmm. So it spiraled out very quickly into something that people did lightheartedly as to people either taking for a joke or defending with blood sweat and tears as like a legitimate coping mechanism that they needed um and this is where splits started to happen huge online fights would happen like that discord i was in it was like two people wanted to kin the same character and that shit was not a loud that be- oh, it became a very uh, territorial thing, so that's why Gatekeepy. that's what a kin list is in referring to. It used to be this huge thing that it's you weren't allowed to follow other people online unless you looked at their kin list, make sure you guys didn't have any, you know, cross contamination, or you know, if <laughs> if you kinned a character that their character they kinned hated in that series, you were not allowed to be friends in real life. What the fuck? Um, huh. So it became yeah, that's not, this very... That's not, that's not healthy at all. It became... No. Yeah, and it, it's hard to say because it Wait, is they, so they, construed weird online. And I ended up, like, you know, trying to legitimately research this online. But a lot of it is, you know, in relations to jokes being like, 
I can, I can George W. Bush kind of things. Like it just, it became <laughs> stuff like that. But you do have these stances. I specifically ended up deep diving on one that led um, down to this entire um, explanation on a website of cosmic reincarnation and how that they believe that is a real thing and that is the justifiable explanation for kinning and kinning was co-opted by a community that uses it for bullying um when really it's like a spiritual event like it just went so wild in two opposite different directions that's crazy i was just looking at the wiki page it said there's like different flavors like fiction kin is like what we're talking about then there was weather kin yes and then other like, kin is oh, like i a, love a tornado like an, an, an animal <laughs> no matt you can't be a tornado I'm a, no, um it's yes got so those two holes. those specific um <laughs> those like i guess subcultures of other kin weather kin that that's what i was talking about showing up in the 70s 80s 90s in like the heyday of fantasy you know i mean that's when the original D D series were being created that's when tolkien mm. was writing his books like all of that was happening so the option to you know otherwise self-identify became more of an accessible thing hmm. interesting um who, huh who is your who's who is your kin i made the observation that visually you and i look like the two female leads from trigun <laughs> you you too do uh, and it's it's really we, sweet we could do a real good gender swap cosplay. it's really yeah the original it is like release of trigon you two are um miriam and why can't i think of the other girl's name um oh god uh millie and i've been watching it i know is, it's millie and millie thompson yeah <laughs> And, oh, I've got 69 emails. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Can oh I can I read some of my other shitty kin list generated characters that they gave me? Well, because this website? is... No, no, no. I'm cur- I am curious to know from a standpoint for um, us now. So that's just a kin list generator. That is just randomized. They picked, you know, usually characters associated with not good... Like, if you met someone, they're like, oh, no. yeah, I kin... Uh, you know, Rick from Rick and Morty, it's like, oh, you know, you're just a miserable person to try to tolerate shit. kind of thing. So that's an abusive father. that's what the shitty kin list generator means is, oh, if you see oh. someone with that kin, you're kind of like, ooh, okay. Um, that's that's what that is. That's totally randomized. I want to know who... Have Twilight Sparkle who, and Rainbow Dash. Who you genuinely kin, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> who do I genuinely kin yeah. where I'm like... Oh, they I mean, get that. Like, I, I do find like it to be a coping thing to be like, oh, I can really connect with this yeah. like character in a piece of media, so it helps me frame. What no, I'm I think through. I but think I in its like in its base work, kinning was just kind of a like, ooh, this is cool. I really you know self identify with this character. It's the same thing when you're a kid and you really like a character, and you're like, I want all this Sonic merch now. I'm going to douse myself in Listen. Sonic merch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the crushing uh, childhood experience of being on a playground and playing pretend and everyone's like, no, you have to be Knuckles. And I'm like, I don't want to be Knuckles. They're like, too bad. Someone has You're to be Knuckles. knuckles. <laughs> Having just learned what kinning is, I feel a lot of pressure right now because I feel like I'm going to be heavily judged by our Discord yeah, that's and the, listeners. Yeah, that's the whole point it, of that. <laughs> it does seem like a like an intense version of that like just relating to a character in media it is like taking that to a much it more is personal yeah level. it is taking yeah. it to like an a, a personal and extreme level i think at this point now it's been so construed that it is like a joke upon a joke of itself um and then there mm. is that small you know subcategory of people who do at the end of the day like make it uh uh, emotional self-involved piece of their life um which again they're adults they can do whatever they want i guess um <laughs> but matt you have to self-assign a kin right now i uh, pressure <laughs> is it garoot from guardians of the galaxy <laughs> no i don't think it's anything marvel related it can be like any um, piece of fiction or media 
Um, hey, I know exactly who it is. Is it Adam Driver? Well, Why no, because he's a Adam human Driver? being. Oh. Is it Adam Driver when he's portraying a different character on SNL? Uh, is it Adam no, Driver in the Gucci movie? The Gucci movie? Yeah. I thought you... For some reason, I heard Goofy movie, and I was like, Adam Driver wasn't in the Goofy movie. They should remake the Goofy movie with Adam Driver as Goofy. Um, Is it Dexter Reed from Good Burger? No, it's not. Are you just naming off... Is it Ed from Good Burger? <laughs> who, who do you think, historian? Because I can't... I'm I'm having a hard time... I hope it's not Dan Schneider's character. No, from no, Mike, it's who, not. Mike, who would you can? <laughs> not Dan Schneider's not Dan character Sh- from Good Burger. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, this is a hard question because because mm-hmm. if you it, yeah, if it you, feels it, so personal. It feels so personal after what you have just described, and it's like I feel like it it will set the scene as if people want to continue to listen to the podcast. Well, because it's like I know I know characters who are like, like I said, like I I I watched Trigun as a uh, kid, and then I watched it as like a teenager in high school, and I'm rewatching it now, and I was like, oh my god, it's like fucking crazy how much, like how foundational this show was for mm-hmm. me, and that I, like I don't remember a ton of it all the time, but like I'm like, oh, like this characterization and these like aspects and stuff like Vash the Stampede was a character I really vibed with because I liked this character who was an idiot who didn't want to hurt anybody and was all about helping and I always thought that was the coolest thing mm-hmm. ever um, and that doesn't happen with like a lot of characters in media but I don't think I can Vash the Stampede I don't know who do you uh, who do you well instead can of can I kin the scene where <laughs> I can I can <laughs> Vegeta just in the scene where Frieza has him by the neck and is just pounding him in the kidneys? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do you remember that on Namek? <laughs> <laughs> Vegeta just got punched in the kidneys a lot by Frieza. Uh, I kin that. <laughs> what if Mike just kins Vegeta and I'll kin Goku? Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean that's not. It's definitely like <laughs> I feel that for our personal dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> for the personal uh, dynamic you guys are oh shit does that mean I'm Piccolo I mean I'm fine with that <laughs> <laughs> you're a better dad than me um. <laughs> yeah it tracks I don't know what the fuck you're talking about I'm a great dad um, This is what do you think historian you said you had one in mind for you yeah you're not going to be mad if I say it? No, I'm not going to be mad. It's Charlie Brown. Oh, yeah. Aww. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Literally, in front of... So, in a, a good friend of ours, um, I will not say his name out loud. Thank I you for say, not doxing our real-life friends on the um, show. Maybe his name rhymes with... Bugrustin Bududay. <laughs> um... <laughs> Mr. Bidet. Yes. Um, in college, in, <laughs> in a class, we had a ba- a class of like 20 something people and we had to like, uh, we were working on some like group project within the whole class. Uh, and uh, this person called me out in front of everyone and said, we have a literal Charlie Brown right here. Um <laughs> I feel like people don't hate you as much as they hate Charlie Brown for no reason. I I don't know if how oh, yeah, I mean a lot. Uh, I guess Dorian the, does have Lucy vibes though. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, there's a play called Doxy's God, uh, which is I think it's kind of dated at this point. I haven't read the script lately. Uh, but in it, there's this whole scene where Charlie Brown, it's basically like edgy Charlie Brown characters, Peanuts characters. Uh, mm-hmm. And Charlie goes to visit Lucy because she's in the uh, psych ward. Um, nice. Because she's, <laughs> Thanks, she, Mike. And I she appreciate has a, the she, self-assigned Lucy. And she, she has this whole <laughs> monologue about um, how she was like, she won't admit it, but she's, she was inadvertently jealous of uh, the little redhead girl uh, because she was like, 
because Charlie Brown liked her and stuff. So uh, she's in the psych ward because she lit the little redhead girl's head on fire. Nice. <laughs> I respect that. It's a good monologue. It's a good time. Good scene. Um, anyway, I think I've got. I think I've got mine. Yeah. I think it's Meowth from Team Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I, just because I can only think of the there's like a gif and like scene of it where he just walks out into an arena and says boy sure got a lot of people to disappoint <laughs> <laughs> and that feeling of like wanting to be cooler and edgier than you are but like just absolutely not yeah like absolutely have having no edge to you at all but like feeling like you might yeah so Meowth or James yeah yeah, I'll, do, I'll I'll go with the some weird combination of that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, Charlie Brown's pretty good for me. I. Uh. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I feel I feel like this is really personal and and people need, do. I don't think people just kin people just from what you have described. Mm-hmm. Well, like it sounds really like well like thought through. Out. That was. Like, oh yeah. Well. Really, yeah, that was part of the the split in I guess the community we'll call it is some people were like kinning is fun. <laughs> I think I choose to relate to this character and the other people were like this is involuntary. This is who I am. Oh, he's got a little mm. meowth doll. It's so out of focus. <laughs> it's beautiful. He's got a meowth and a polywhirl. And I also I do have a Vegeta from Matt. Matt, do you want to get Yeah. Goku and Vegeta tattoos? Yeah. 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 All right. I think we should <laughs> Like of them themselves, you should, or? you should get like Goku when he first goes Super Saiyan, and I should get Vegeta's dead body <laughs> <laughs> after he gets shot in the heart. Instead, could we get? Could we just get? Could we get just get um, the two of them in their like weird outfits from Broly, uh, where they have like those like jackets Ooh. on the with, puffy like, coats? The collars up to the like puffy coats. Like we could do. We could do like maybe somewhere on our forearm or some something. Do the fusion So dance when you like pose. bump arms, they are oh, in yeah. sync. You bumping together? I love that. Please. Uh, Let's do it. It's going to be so sad when one of us dies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bumping against the coffin. <laughs> uh, well, I hope everyone's happy that they know what kinning is. Yeah. Do you guys uh, want hey, the game? We- yeah, the game. We have the game and we do have a transponder oh. snail uh, message. Yeah. Um, fuck us up with that game. Fuck us with that game. That all these psychopaths like. Yeah. Hey everyone, if you want to let us know who you can, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Check out hey. the dude in the Discord. Oh, this is from the Broly movie. Yeah, it's the puffy. Go- this was provided by a um, friend <laughs> of the show, Casey. <laughs> Look Thank at you, their Casey. Notes. <laughs> Incredible. I like that sign. They He's uh, muffling Chopper with his hand. They look like uh, Charlie Brown characters. Yeah. They do. Oh, does Chopper have a little jacket on there? He does. <laughs> oh, my God. He, Incredible. too, can get cold. Um, this looks... Uh, uh, so I'm learning things now. Um, I'm learning that I will share with you, Mike. Uh, I'm learning... Uh, oh. This is definitely pre-time skip. Yeah, uh-huh. because I know I know um, Zoro. I've noticed has got, gets whiter. Yeah, which is strange. After the time skip. Yeah, his which is, yeah. yeah, which is very strange. Which is weird. And then Sanji's eyes is like his hair flips. <laughs> yeah, we're learning things, even though we haven't seen the time skip. But it's fine. Um, anyway, I'm gonna say episode two eighty seven. Okay, Mike. Three twenty-two. Mike coming dangerously close. This is from episode three thirty-five. Oh, Whoa. Mike! Man, Fuck. does not happen often. Cherishing it. Ah, oh, congratulations! Cherished. Congratulations. Uh, we have one transponder snail. Are you ready for this? Yes, I'll read it. I can read it. I'm not even going to open the email. I'm just going to listen. Um, it is. It says, it's, uh, hey, Matt and Mike. Uh, this is from mm-hmm. ben, Bentenaru. 
uh, the, the next installment of the, the the anime character on anime character fight tournament. Hey, Matt and Mike. I hope y'all are enjoying this tournament. The battle y'all chose mm -hmm. is Chainsaw Devil versus Crocodile. You can search up the Chainsaw Devil if you don't know it. Uh, now I I'm, actually know that one. I know uh, that one too. Do we want to? Uh, do we want to say this and then we'll go under the rest of the the transponder snail email? But uh, yeah, it's, 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 all right. It's Chainsaw, oh, Devil. Chainsaw Devil. Yeah, it's Chainsaw Devil. Yeah, it's Chainsaw Devil. Chainsaw wow. Man is so fucking good. I like Chainsaw Man a lot. It's um, really good. So, question though, Chainsaw Devil is that specifically? Um, is it like the little, just a cute little guy, or is it? Have you just watched Chainsaw yeah, Man? Yeah, I haven't read Chainsaw Man. I've just watched. You see, you see the full-on Chainsaw Devil in the manga. Oh. And I don't know many people who would want to fuck with that. That's fair. <laughs> He's the thing hell's afraid of, Matt. So that's fair. Crocodile would get. I mean. Yeah, crocodile would get wet with blood. Um, yeah, and maybe some other stuff. And some <laughs> other stuff. I was gonna say chain, chainsaw man, the manga and anime. It's a very goopy wet series. <laughs> the, the wettest. Yeah, there's a lot of in so many ways li liquids. Yeah. Anyway, chainsaw devil, Ben Tenaru, chainsaw devil wins the bout between Ch Chainsaw Devil and Crocodile. Thank you. We're excited for the next installment. I think we need to choose a number, but I don't know what numbers we have chosen. Uh, Let's um, say six. Um, I can go back. And if not six, I think you guys nine. already chose six. six. Six is available, I think. Six. Because um, I think last time you said Let's go with two or four, number maybe. Number the beast. Um, so, yeah, we'll say six. Um, question we would... Uh, now I have a question. Would y'all rather be able to have a devil fruit or be able to be in one piece? Would you rather mm. have a devil fruit in real life or would you rather be able to like live in the one piece world, Mike? I don't know if I want to exist in the same plane of existence as Luke. <laughs> but Smoker's <laughs> also there. Smoker's also there. You could climb him like a tree like you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. But I I really like Smoker. I don't know if I'd have a great time hanging out with Smoker. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't keep up. <laughs> I don't know. Just be puking. I, mean, I guess after I could shoot the cigar. shit with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who in I would? Would I want to hang out with anybody in One Piece? I'd want. I'd take walks with Hiking Bear. Yeah. Oh. If, so if nice. I just live on Drum Island, yeah, sure. Yeah. Hang out with Dalton in his weird body. <laughs> catch glimpses of Dr. Kareha and be like, I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> anything. I don't know. I guess I would, I think I'd rather have devil fruit powers. Like if I could have smokers powers in real mm -hmm. life and just smoke around everywhere. Fucking awesome. That'd be pretty cool. I would probably rob a bank. <laughs> 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 this can't be used against me. And it would only be used against me if I turned into smoke. So I either get the dark gift or I eat a devil fruit. All right. Matt, what about you? Uh, I would probably take a devil fruit. Mm. I I enjoy life for the most part in our world, maybe. So a devil fruit would accentuate some fun stuff. It might complicate it a little bit, um, depending on which devil fruit you got. Um, historian, what about you? Um, it's so hard. The world of One Piece is so cool. Um, but I also have um a handful of chronic illnesses. Um, that not that I don't trust, you know, Doctor Chopper, Doctor Kareha to keep me alive, but like, <laughs> I don't know if the One Piece world would meet my dietary restrictions. <laughs> So I think I would take a devil so fruit, and work. I think to combat my chronic illnesses, I would take the munch munch fruit, just so I could eat inanimate mm. objects. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. Hell yeah! How how about this? I just pulled up a one piece devil fruit generator. Okay. Do we want to randomly pick what devil fruit we each oh, get? Yeah, let's do it. Well, ooh, can All I? Right. Can I? Can Can you send the link to me? I don't want you guys to see anything. That's a spoiler. <laughs> 
Okay. That's fair. The one that popped up first was just the dice dice fruit, which I've already, we've okay. already seen, which is good. All right. That's good. That's good. Okay. There goes my <laughs> forbidden knowledge. Your forbidden knowledge. Um, yeah. And then there's one last part to the transponder snail historian specifically for you. Okay, I can't tell you that one. 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 That's fine. I can't. No, some of these are so (laughs) specific. Specific. (laughs) That I. But it wouldn't be fun where it's like, oh, well, just like we don't even have to know that they're real. Are there like fake ones in there? There are not fake ones that I have seen so far. Oh, I'm just gonna click until. Okay, so who wants to go first, Matt or Mike? Mike. I'll, I'll go first. You go first. He um, won the game. He goes first. He goes first. He gets the chop chop fruit. Congratulations. You get to oh be your hero, my Buggy. Gosh. Hell yeah. Okay. Man, I would keep my dick in butt at <laughs> home all the time <laughs> and never have to go to the bathroom at work. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's not weird. Everyone has one. Have we that. have we talked? <laughs> <laughs> have we talked about this when you eat something if his butt was in a different place we've talked about does it the poop come out the butt the poop or does comes it out come the butt out like or does it the just poop comes out the butt oh, it doesn't it just doesn't come out a hole in his body uh, matt i'm very sorry to tell you <laughs> you close did, off all your holes <laughs> you did receive the rumble rumble fruit you did get and fruit and that's fine <laughs> i mean that would be cool. I could like static shock it and like zoom around on electrical lines and shit. You'd um, save a lot of money and gas. Yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. I could also tra- fucking transmutate metal, so that's fun. Yeah. I would have such a future at a haunted house. I would just like um. go to a scrapyard at the the transfer station, get a bunch of scrap metals that were thrown in the metal pile, and then I would set up a little table at a craft fair and be like. Hello, what would you like today here at the <laughs> farmer's market? And then just transmute like an old, like broken frame from a storm door into like a fun helmet. I would become a magician's assistant. <laughs> I could be the magician. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could be in half of lightning. Historian, what what devil fruit did you get? Um, oh wait, no, I can't be a magician because historian would then divorce me. That is in the vows. Oh. You're not allowed to be a magician. Yeah. Um, a wizard. You could be a wizard. I could be a wizard. <laughs> but no, we don't want to be a wizard in this world. I, <laughs> Shit. Uh, honestly, ironically enough, the first one that I have clicked through that is a fruit you guys know is the munch munch fruit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, yeah. The first the first one I did get um, is really cool, and I would pick it as an option um but i guess i guess i can let you know what that devil fruit is called i won't tell you who has it um but it's the string string fruit gross it is gross it is gross that sounds gross i don't want that at all it yeah yeah um hey there's one last part to the transponder snail yeah uh, ben Tenaru says, I have a question for the historian. It involves Ben Ten. Uh, <laughs> I will give think- it my best absolute shot. Do you think Ultimate Kevin had the powers of Alien X? Sorry, that's not related to One Piece in any way. Ultimate Kevin th- and Alien X. Yes. I, this is like racking my brain. Hey, Ben Tenaru. All the words just bounce Ben Tenaru, <laughs> do you kin Ben Ten? That's what I would. That's a question I'm asking back to you. Um, while historian is deciding if Ultimate Kevin had the powers of alien. Eggs. So, who's the hot? Well, no, who's the hottest alien, alien in Ben Ten? <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, don't it that. depends on what you're into. <laughs> it's really just what whatever you're into, because um, one exists <laughs> for everything. Um, so. Alien X's ability, from my memory, was basically, I mean, I'm going to call them just so the guys can understand. Um, They were similar to, like, Raven's powers in Teen Titans. You can, you know, kind of corporally shapeshift through walls and stuff. You can teleport. You can generate force fields. Um, He could also alter his size. 
um, to some degree. But ultimate Kevin, he had the abilities of like most of them, but I don't know if it was specifically specified that he got Alien X in there as well, because looking at him, you can see like which parts alien he was so i don't know if it's ever oh. specified but i don't remember what species alien x was interesting okay i don't know anything about ben 10 so <laughs> Is the character's name like birth name ultimate kevin <laughs> no it he became he was kevin and he became ultimate the ultimate iteration and is of he himself. like not a is he a cool guy or is he like not a cool guy he was a cool guy and that well he was not a cool guy and then he became he, a cool guy and then he was not a cool guy again he went through some ups and downs does he Wait, was he like always a loser because his name's ultimate kevin does he does he does he fuck when he's ultimate kevin and then he doesn't yeah. when he's kevin does ultimate kevin can fuck? i hold on Wait, i'm gonna does alien children. x fuck okay first um. of all the entire show is minors <laughs> keep that in mind all right, oh, no forget mind. I said any of that. I'm, Everyone, no I'm going to paste you not. an image of Ultimate Kevin. That's what <laughs> Ultimate Kevin looks like. <laughs> that's somebody's fucking bionicle figure that they jammed together. He, well, that's that's in his <laughs> ultimate form. Yeah, he was like a mishmash yeah. of like twenty yeah, plus Kevin. different alien species. Get it? Hell yeah, Kevin. I Kevin just, is ultimate. I like that. Hell yeah. What does Ultimate Kevin look like? <laughs> Yeah. What the rest of the time? <laughs> well, no, he just hey, when he's. I'm sure it's great. I'm never gonna. Is this always what he looks like? Is this his default? No, because if you look up Kevin, he's hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna find the correct picture of Kevin to show you guys. No, hold on. I got the I I got how we're closing out the podcast. I'm gonna list all the species that Ultimate <laughs> Kevin is, and then we're just gonna fade out. Let me know it's, when you guys. It's like we didn't right. start the fire. It's just listing. <laughs> Stuff. Ben Tenneru, thank you so much for oh Transponder Snail. We very much appreciate it. Uh, everybody else, please send in more Transponder Snails. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, Kevin. Mo- oh, yeah. Moody Boy Kevin. Uh, we're going to watch episodes 201 to 206. That yes. will be our, yeah, we'll be finishing off uh, G8 next episode. You guys are going to be finishing Kevin? G8, and then you guys are on to the arc with the very long name. Long Ring, Long Ooh. Island arc. Long, right? uh, Long, yeah. Island. Long name, nice. That's fun. That's funny. Kevin looks like he was the most devastated when the uh, hot topic started closing. <laughs> Kevin looks like uh, the like uh, misunderstood antagonist uh, high schooler from Sky High who ends up joining the um, team and helping. You save mean the day. War and Peace? <laughs> yeah, he looks like War and Peace. He looks exactly like War and Peace. Kevin looks like he always keeps a spray bottle on hand so he can maintain that wet look. If you two <laughs> want us to rip apart a dear character from your childhood, please submit them. I will show the guys a photo and they will just make a bit out of it. Ben Tenneru, uh, thank you so much for your transponder snail. Everybody else, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate, we appreciate you. Uh, please continue to spread the word. Share us with your friends and family and uh, acquaintances and tell them to listen to the Fun Piece podcast because... Because, yeah, it's a good time. We're having a good time. We started off hot today talking about holes, hot. all the holes. And I'm all interested in how many holes <laughs> oh, that Ultimate Kevin has. <laughs> Honestly, I'm guessing a lot. All right, I'm just going to list these yeah. out, and I'm going to fade out. Do as it. I go. 136 Mutant Human, Osmosian. Ooh. 136 Methanosian. 136 Sonorosian. 136 Vaxisaurian. 136 Aerophibian, 136 Necrofri- <laughs> Necrophrygian, 136 that's where Crystal the, Sapien. That's where all the holes come from, the Necro one. That's where all the, the holes necrophrygian. come from. Necrophrygian. Um, in, the, in the rated R version, they call it the Necrophugian. Uh, 136 Cerebro Crustacean. I like that one. 136 Arachnachimp. <laughs> <laughs> 136 polymorph. Did he have a lot of parents? 136 Arburian Pel- Pelorota. 136 Merc Gourmand. 136 Two Kustar. Is this a Ben 10 podcast now? <laughs> One thir- I'm not even halfway through. 136 Vulpinmancer. 
We're going to see the listener count drop off at the end here. 136 nano. I hope you fade out before this. <laughs> 136 <laughs> nano chip. He's part nano chip. 136 biots of <laughs> Savarshan. 136 pyronite. 136 petro sapien. 136 ecto neurite. 136 apoplexian. 136 evolved vaxasaurian. 136 evolved methanotian. Kevin was fucking everybody. 136 evolved magnachim. 136 evolved to grow freaky. He's both a network.